Yes, sir. Welcome to another episode of The 116 Life right here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. Listen, we're so happy that you're tuned in once again. If you're an OG listener, we appreciate you as always. And listen, if this is your first time listening, man, listen, welcome to The 116 Life. As y'all can listen right now, I got to tell y'all something. I'm holding it down solo. Much love to Ace, man. Ace cannot make it this episode, Shut man. Up, we, it hurts our heart, man. Yeah. But listen, I, he sends lots of love and we send him all the love right back but listen i'm solo but i'm not solo not really okay i'm really not solo okay you know i gotta set everybody up who our special guest is this week yo he really fam for real okay because of listen so he is one of the creator of one of my favorite projects super duper crunk tape he's the freshest you know what i'm saying (laughs) you know he's um ah man there's he's just such a intentional dynamic unique creative and listen, he's the freshest on fresh. And if you ever ask him, hey, yo, WAP, you made this? He did. Show you did. You know what I'm saying? Show did. Listen, Thank we got you. Scooty WAP with us here for the 116 Life. Scooty! What's up, Cuzzo? Cuzzo, how you hey. feeling, man? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. It's, it's great to be back uh, in my home away from home. You know, yeah. Reach is like, they, they family. So yeah. to be back in the studio after so long. It's, I feel that, it, it man. It feels super good, yeah. We're ha- I'm so happy you're here. Yeah. So new year, we're in it, you know, we're trickling into like you know the new months of 2024 what is your what is your focus on for 2024 focus for 2024 um is honestly like growing my knowledge uh in God's heart mm-hmm. this year um I feel like I've been given the platform to spread God's word and the good news yeah but it's hard for me to put that message out there if I'm not really understanding the creator so mm-hmm. um I've been tasked with like Absorbing more Christian content, you know, books, uh, podcasts, filtering my YouTube, even like movies and TV shows. Like now I'm I'm trying to go more towards like Angel Studios mm-hmm. where it's, it's like I know that I'm getting something good in, in my good. system. Uh, and then I know music is like that's my that's my love. I know it's going to be great, but it won't be nearly as good um, if I wasn't staying connected with guys. So. I'm reading that big Bible. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I'm you reading it on me. I keep it on me. It's in the bag right <laughs> I feel now. You. I feel you. What, what are some things that you've been consuming, like, content-wise? Like you said, books and podcasts that have been really, like, you know, uh, penetrating your heart recently. Yeah. So, um, number one, The Leader's Cut by uh, Preston Morris. Mm-hmm. That, that's, like, a big one. Uh, he, he's very... Very relaxed, yeah. but he speaks with a lot of power and yeah. authority um, because he knows that it comes from God. Uh, I've been reading the book, The Awe of God by uh, John Bevere, mm-hmm. um, which is just talking about uh, the fear of God it is more than just reverence and a great respect, but it's actually that and um, coming to him and, and trembling and, and seeing like his creation and recognizing the power that God has. It's like, I'm yeah. in awe of you. Like in the Bible, it says like people couldn't even look him in the face yeah. in half of his glory. Mm-hmm. So like seeing his full glory, all knees will bow. I- I'm not worthy of seeing. So that book has been really good. Um, music wise, I've been listening to a lot of like the the younger cats because I'm 25. So mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a little bit older now. Um, people like like 404 Chew. Um you gotta have Breeze in there. We, you know, we came up together. As always, yeah. Zaya Malik, he's really good. Yeah, I, heard, I yeah. was listening to West Side Nights too on the way yeah. over here. Zaya's crazy. Fire, yes. Yeah. So like, just, just kind of like hearing the hearts of, of the people around me too. I feel like the music space has been really good for that as well. That's good, man. Yeah. So I, I feel like I gotta start off by saying congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. there's been so many things that's been happening for you. One being a newlywed. Congrats yep. to you and your wife. Love and you, wife. Lovely wife. And also, you know, music and things like that, man. It's just been like one thing after the other, after yeah. the other. And it's so great being able to see you in this season. How has this season been like for you? Just like going on that up road hill of, of success, genuinely. Um, it's It's been a lot of growing pains, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, of course, if you look at just numbers, like this was this past year was the biggest streaming numbers wise in my career. Mm-hmm. Um, and it all felt good in the moment. But honestly, I felt a little hypocritical mm. um, because it was like at one point in the beginning of my career, when you hear Super Duper Crunk Tape and all of that stuff, it was 
genuine fun and it's the joy of the Lord. But now I got so consumed in, I just signed to a major label. Facts. So I need to give them strictly hits. So I might need to compromise my sound or put myself out there so much where it, it just didn't feel like me after yeah. a while. And I got towards the end of the year and it was hard to celebrate. Um, Cause it's like, I'm, I'm telling people, you know, God is all you need and don't worry about the money and, and all of these things. But I was checking my distro kid account like yeah, every day. Yeah. 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 yeah so it, it felt very hypocritical to, to uh, act like I was like so holier than now. And you know, Oh, I, people posting all this content that ain't me. I'm not that guy, but I genuinely want to put out that stuff. And then when I did, it was like, the algorithm is hitting. So I'm trying to post stuff mm -hmm. where it'll catch. And then now it's more virality. Mm -hmm. You have one big viral moment and it's mm -hmm. like, you're trying to get that feel again. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why I felt like it was my downfall uh, where I couldn't celebrate, but I got married mm -hmm. and, and having somebody that's equally yoked, she pointed a lot of that stuff out mm -hmm. and it, it brought me back down to the humble place where I know I was supposed to be. So now I can enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. that's good, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm. Thank you for sharing that because I mm -hmm. think some people think on the outside looking in. I know I did. I'm like, yo, like, it's just on the up and up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the the fact that you were you were feeling low at that moment, but then like, thank God for your wife, man, yeah. for being able to shine those let those things yeah. come out of you and spotlight yeah. those things is such a beautiful it. thing. You know what I'm saying? So I love that. Um, for both of you being able to be in each other's lives. Um, okay, so. Ah oh, man, Scooty, I feel like you're 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 in such a a pivotal time, I feel like, mm -hmm. in your career yes. because I know that you're making a lot of changes when it comes to like your music and your artistry and things like that. Um, how did you like what what is it like going through a change of artistry? You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. it's, or like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. or is it a change of artistry? Do you feel like it's like that at all? Or is it just some insonics? Like talk a little bit about the changes that you're kind of like shifting in for your career. Yeah. So I, I feel like the the change in artistry has been, of course, sonics. Like now I'm going more like gospel trap. Mm -hmm. Um the the lyrics now are gonna be more uh objective, you know, versus subjective, uh, which is like subjective is just like your testimony and things like that. But objective is strictly and straight from the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like business-wise, like now I'm actually starting to take that stuff serious. Mm -hmm. Like get your LLC. What's that like? Yeah, get, get an LLC. business side of things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's, it's like um, it's, it's taking pictures of all your receipts. It's reporting to, to somebody and, and knowing that your stuff is covered. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels good. Of course, the initial investment might not be what you think it should be. Mm -hmm. You're like, dang, I gotta pay five, six hundred, you know, just for yeah, just to yeah, keep yeah. something, you yeah. know, for the but it's it's all right because you lose a little bit in in the beginning, but you gain so much more in the long run. So that's what it's been, whether if it's clothing, you know, I, I might lose bread yeah. buying fifty pieces of clothes to sell, but the message got out there yeah, and thanks. it's gonna last forever. Um but yeah, business wise it's just going to people who've done it before you mm -hmm. and like asking a bunch of questions like and not hiding anything either mm -hmm. like i'm gonna tell you hey my credit wasn't hitting right now mm -hmm. but it's good now but like yeah credit ain't there or i got this much in debt and and it's just opening all that up and being transparent so it's it's been a a great change i feel like you're it seems as if there's a lot of things behind the scenes and in the forefront that we're seeing in a change for you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's and it's you can even tell it in your your persona and how you talk of how honestly, genuinely, it takes a a large amount of humility yeah. to say I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To ask questions and things like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I I admire that in you being able to be in the forefront in a new scenario around people who are in higher stature and things like that, yeah. but be able to be like, yo, can you put me up on game? You Please know what I'm do. saying? <laughs> what, 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 what is that like? You know, being able yeah. to just like, was there any uh, hesitance to be able to ask those questions and things like that? Um, I, I guess it was like being around those people a little bit more made you a lot more comfortable with asking those questions. Mm -hmm. So even with, with God, don't take this out of context. Like, Nobody is God, but mm -hmm. with God, it's a lot easier to ask questions because we know 
his heart and who yeah. he is yeah. versus should I ask this or should I not? So like being around other people like a KB or like Wes or my boy Maid, who's been doing a lot of this stuff. It's like I've been around him and done life, you know, enough to where it's like I feel comfortable opening up mm-hmm. and asking these questions. Like yeah. you, can, you can see everything, but it it wasn't it wasn't anything that like was a red flag. Like oh maybe I shouldn't, but I've seen them up close, mm-hmm. so I trust you. It's, it's good having people like that in your corner. Yeah. Man. We can just be like so genuine mm-hmm. and they can be able to give you all the help that you need. Yeah. Um, I know, I, I feel like you have so many different parts of you um, in an artist sense, even a producer sense. Genuinely, I'm really curious to know who your influences are, who influence you musically, whether it's people you know, just like in your circle or even mm-hmm. just like in, in the music industry in general. Who, who influences Scooty Wop? Okay. I think I'll do like the all around okay. uh, encapsulation. When I first came into, let me back back, um, regular hip hop, okay. right? Kanye West, mm-hmm. sample chops, very authentic drums, yeah. soulful, big one. John Legend, vocals are silky. Oh, whoa, crazy. I can see that yeah. with you. I oh, love John yeah. Legend. John Legend Facts. is dope. Okay, okay. He, his music is dope. Uh, T-Pain. See, T-Pain. I'm not gonna lie to you. Scooty, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, if he don't say T Pain, I'm yeah. gonna say, wow, bro. Teddy P. Yeah. T deserves all his flowers yeah. now. Man is a legend yeah. now. You He's know what I'm saying? He's still doing it still and having doing fun. It. Yeah. So, like, T Pain is a huge one. Um, I'll go Fred Hammond, which No Weapon Remix was huge because I'm like, my huge. mama played Fred out that, all that, day. Man, I, I'm, between him and Kurt, they raised me. Yeah, yeah. Both Kurt of really them. got it, yeah. But Fred, Fred, but Fred did his thing, yeah. People be sleep. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like people, like I, I feel, I feel like that versus battle we saw during COVID. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? That yeah. was legendary. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And a lot like, of people we, missed and, it. And people, who? yeah, a lot of people missed it. They, they, if you, yeah. if people missed that, they were asleep because yeah, I go, feel like that really around. reminds. <laughs> you. Of course, everyone knows Kirk because, like, you know, the mainstream yep. pushes Kirk and things like that. Yeah. But Uncle Fred, Fred, bro, people, Fred got Silky. it on lock. Fred Silky. Who else is there? When I first came into the Christian space, when I gave my life to Christ in 19, um, 1K Few. Okay. 1K Few in uh, 217 actually mm. dropped a song called God First. And yeah. I was like, this is crazy. Bro. So I didn't know Christian rap sounded like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm a lot uh, younger, but 217, 1K Few, P Sun. Mm-hmm. P Sun had a song, Get the Bag, that we used to play in college. West End Shouty. Yes, West End Shawty had uh, what was the song? When I think about Jesus and what it does, yeah, I just saw him yeah. in concert recently, so I know what you're yeah. About. So yeah. West End Super Turn now, I think it's like T.J. Carroll, um, because he he just talks about his life, mm-hmm. Florida boy, um, Zaya Malik again, mm-hmm. he's crazy. Okay, Warren producer, yes, crazy, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you got them, um, of course you got the Vert. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tame Impala. Okay. Yeah, so it's a uh, Kevin Kevin Parker. He's a guitarist slash drummer. Okay, dope. Um, super dope. Uh, the Alchemist producer. Okay. Um, from I don't want to get his area wrong. And then lastly, uh, it's an artist named Bibio. Okay. Yeah, he's from the UK. So it's a lot of like underground, mm-hmm. underground indie ambient stuff, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, that that's kind of like my flavor pot right there. Yeah, yeah. listen, I, I, I in this next segment we're gonna dive more into like I want to know more about like young Scooty, like yeah. early stage. Yeah. I know Scooty was cutting up. You ain't yeah, gotta tell me. For sure. But listen, but um, we're gonna dive more into that when we get back. We're right here on the one one six life here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM channel one forty. Listen, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. And we're back here on the 116 Life here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. Listen, thank you for rocking with us. I got my cousin here on the air. I got Scooty Wop with me here. Listen, so we got to talk about, we got to backtrack a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to know what life was for young Scooty Wop. I want you to take us back. I want you to talk about um, early childhood, what you were getting into, where you grew up, family life, all of that. Yeah, so young Scooty, which was probably like, Four inches shorter than what I am now. For real, uh, <laughs> bro. I'm like five. Two. <laughs> okay, I believe. Okay, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe you then. Yeah, Scooty. Um, I, I grew up in a, a military household, strictly uh, marine. Ooh, yeah. What was so that like? my commissary. 
Yeah. You know, uh, you would get the high and tight haircut. Mm -hmm. Couldn't grow your hair out past a certain length. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I don't know, it felt like a blur. Like, military life, like seeing how we were on base, I felt like I was so disconnected from everything else. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. As a kid, and I moved a lot too. So that's what made it so easy to network with people is because I moved a lot. Okay. A whole lot. I was in Cuba, Jamaica, Whoa. Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Then after I graduated and didn't go to the armed forces, mm -hmm. I still kept moving. So I went yeah. to Atlanta and that's why I got saved and then went back to South Carolina. And now I went to Florida and we're in Toronto. So it's like, yeah. it, it did feel like I was, I don't know, like I had to like survive mm -hmm. because you don't know when you're going to leave next or be stationed anywhere else. Um, so it's like, you got to make friends quick. Mm -hmm. I'm at hotels. You know, my mom would always joke, like if you leave me at a hotel at a pool, you know, and it's other kids, 30 see? minutes, you're going to see me with a group Fact. of kids. Like, yeah. yeah, these my friends and we all having a good time. Right. And she was, I don't, I'm like, it's the military life. Mm -hmm. We always move. Um, I grew up Pentecostal. Uh, my mother and father were both in church. Uh, my, my father uh, was was next in line to be a pastor. He was an armor bearer for the pastor. Oh, okay. Um, and what happened was, and, and I can't speak for him, but I saw a shift in my life when I was around 11, 12. Because uh, my, my grandpa died when I was eight. Uh, Thurman, Thurman lost the senior. Um, he was like a really big pastor in North Carolina, mm -hmm. in Jacksonville, and in Raleigh. Uh, when he passed, I saw this separation of the family. Like everything just started. It was a domino effect. Yeah. Because when you you have you usually hear like the praying grandma, right? Mm -hmm. But it was my grandfather that really brought everything together. Um, so when he passed, I remember it being just like this shift, and um, church wasn't you know really a thing anymore. I see my my parents split when I was twelve and. If anything, we started going to church more, mm -hmm. but I resented church more because my father was a leader in the church. So why should I serve a God that he serves and he will leave his family behind? Mm -hmm. And I was like, church ain't it for me. But I still went. I yeah. went until I can drive. Okay. So from like 12 to 15, I was in church seven days out of the week. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? My mom was a youth pastor. So like. She was really putting in that work to to build this youth group up, and I just wasn't feeling it. So once I got old enough to drive, or I started playing sports, like I was just trying to get away from church. Yeah. I was I was tired. Like I'm I'm seeing the the big glory hallelujah on Sunday morning, and then I'm seeing the the backsliding and the back uh, talking behind people's backs and and like a faithfulness that wasn't there after, like it all felt like a show. So, you know, I started bang game banging at 12 too. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Or we say since day one. Uh, but at, at 12 years old, you know, I, I linked with my older brother and really got into that inside of that city. And once I could drive, I wasn't going to church. So I was out of church for like seven, eight years. Whoa. Just, just living. You know what I'm saying? We'll pop out to the club super young, me and my boy. Uh, double F, all the twins from Russian Ridgeland, everybody like that. Everybody and popped out. Everybody <laughs> popped out. You know what I'm saying? It, it was like, I'm just living lawless. Mm -hmm. Whatever I want to do, I'm doing it. And there is no fear at all in my heart. No mortality is kicking in. I'm not afraid of death because I ain't seen death. Mm -hmm. I seen death for the first time for real in 2015, going into 2016. Uh, Dominique was like my brother, like a little brother to all of us. He got killed on the beach um, at 8 15 p.m. And I have the tattoo on my arm. Um, that's when life really started to kick in. I'm like, dang, you can really die. You can really die out here. So once he once he got killed, I went into my senior year playing football. We all dedicated the season to him. We went like, what was it 14 and one? So we we went nearly undefeated. Yeah, you know so y'all was it. We was going crazy for bro. And it was only like the fifth game into the season. I broke my leg in the six different places, the left one. So I was at home. I missed a lot of my senior year. I was on the computer, on the laptop. I started taking a lot of the prescription meds heavily now. It's like, I feel good, but I just want to pop a perk now. You know what I'm saying? I just want to pop an uh, oxy. 
like quick because it made me feel good. And that's where the drug abuse came in um, my senior year. And from there, it was like downhill. I didn't hang out with none of my friends from school that I played sports with. Um, I started hanging out with the real thugs, you know what I'm saying? Like I, w- I was out there for like a solid two summers, seeing people die left and right, shootings, people having seizures and dying in the trap, overdoses, car crashes. Like it was a lot and I just got so numb. So it, it wasn't until I hit 19 where everything kind of shook back. You know, I found God because I went to a school in, in Atlanta. Uh, the school's not open anymore, but the church is still there. And uh, I really gave God a chance, just one year. And that's all I needed. And I tried to get kicked out of that school too. Why you try to get kicked Cause out? Because it, it felt so, I, I feel like Christianity for me, the way that I saw it, it felt so fake. Where it's like, everybody can't be this joyous. Mm. Everybody's like, we love you, bro. How can I help you? And they're mm. always like, smile. I'm like, can you show me like the struggle? And, and what's really going on. And it's like, no, these people really have the joy of the Lord right now. And they want to help, regardless of what your background is. But I wasn't ready for that. So I tried to get kicked out, whether if it was like, oh, I got caught with something, or I was trying to talk to girls, or, mm-hmm. man, I, I just need to stay home because I don't got the bread to come back to school. And it yeah. was like, no, like people were paying for me to stay at the school. Oh, shut up. So I'm like, okay, God, I got you. So I gave the rest of that year from November all the way to July, and I've been on fire ever since. Sheesh, man. Oh. That was my fault. What a story. Yo, I feel like you said a lot of good things um, with you talking just now. I'm thinking about you said the the hypocritical sense Mm -hmm. of church, Mm -hmm. what Christians the, the mask yeah. that we all know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, did that, are you conscious of that now when it, with the, who you are now with, I guess how um, the influence you have with people, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. do, do, do you sense that a lot with, um, with those around you? Like, does that, do you repel that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm curious to know um, how that seeing those hypocrites and like that show yeah. affected who you are today, how conscious mm-hmm. you are. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. Um, I'm very conscious now. Like even if it's shows that I do, um, I want to make sure if I can, that I can stay after and talk to people. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, there's pros and cons to both sides. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you leave too early, you seem Hollywood. And then now nobody wants to associate with you because you leave too early. Flip side. Mm-hmm. From a, a leadership perspective, let's say you just preached an amazing word. You just you just tore the house down. God was the spirit was was so heavy it manifested in that room. People were getting saved. People's you know ailments were being healed. All of this stuff, confirmation, everything, the whole nine. You come off of that platform with this spiritual high, and now it's gonna feel like you're just receiving praise. Yeah, man wasn't created to receive praise. No. You know what I'm saying? So. It's, it's a balance, and my wife has been helping me out a lot with that, but I'm very conscious. Like, if somebody wants to talk to me and it feels like a real conversation and it's not just like, oh, let's snap a pic. We got to work, and then they go. Like, if you do that at a show and you're watching this right now, I'm not looking at it as like a serious interaction. I want to know who you are, why those. should we work, what are you about? Um, so, like, I, I like to stay and talk. If you really want to talk about something, and if I don't know, I'm going to tell you I don't know, but we can look it up. So I'm very conscious. And I'll tell my homies, too. Like, don't feel like you have to speak to everybody, but try to speak to somebody. Yeah. That's At least real. one person that that's you real. don't know. So I, I kind of get a little weird. Where I see somebody that kind of like me mugging. They don't say too much. I'm like, I'm going to talk to him. Yeah. As soon as I'm done. Yeah. Because I'm like, before, it's almost like you have to earn somebody's respect. They're yeah. like, they're, they're, they're not or they're cosign. So... Rock out, go crazy for the Lord. And I'm like, I seen you in the crowd. I'm going to talk to you after this. Mm-hmm. Now I know that your heart's a little bit more open. You yeah. know, you see that we really stepping for Christ. Um, so. I want to ask, if you don't mind me asking, for what sure. what attracted you at that time to want to be a part of a, a part of a game? <laughs> Whew. Uh, it it was the the sense of family, mm-hmm. right? So 
a lot of people that grow up without their pops and you know mama's holding it, holding it down and you're just like I want brothers mm. you know aside from sports because you know that's just athletic ability that you made a team and now all of y'all have to work together but it's like what is the common what is the common denominator to all of us that are in this situation a lot of us grew up single parent homes um, a lot of folks moved around a lot I won't say I grew up in poverty. I would never say that. My mama did a great job. You know, she did what she had to do. But in my in my eyes, we had less than what I thought we should have. Oh, got you. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm just, you're just banding up with other people that feel the same. You know what I'm saying? It's a common interest. You just want to feel like you're a part of something. So that was the whole gang culture. I didn't want to intimidate nobody. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel threatened anywhere I went. Like I done moved a lot. You know, military, so we we can still get down, whatever. But it was just feeling like a part of something other than extracurricular activity. Yeah. Yeah, but now looking back, like, what is going on? But you know what's crazy is that you, how then you, that's what you wanted was that sense of family. But then you now you got vert mob. Shout out to the mob. Yeah, shout, shout out, out to the to mob. TJ Carroll. Yeah. Uh, God fearing. Yep. Big Breeze. I'll call him Bishop. I'm going to say that. Bishop even all the time. I call him Bishop Breeze all the time. <laughs> um. Now you got that. Yeah. What, and we talked a little bit off air about accountability and you having yeah. those things. What is it like now? Um, what is it like having that brotherhood? But I, I love seeing y'all together. Yeah. I love seeing y'all link. I love seeing y'all perform. It just seems so genuine and real. And then knowing yeah. that from your past and now you have that, mm-hmm. I know you. I know it's got a hold weight in yeah. your heart. What is it like having that, um, having them as a brotherhood around you? It's, it's super dope. I, I feel like I wish we could get more of it because we're all in different places, yeah. right? So Breeze is in the A, holding it down. God fearing is in Ohio. Me and TJ actually stayed together for the last like year and a half. Oh, bro! So like we got super yeah, tight. Like, that's that's, dope. that's yeah. my boy. Yeah. You know, uh, shout out to Cherry Hills, everybody like that. So uh, it, it's really good to have that accountability. It, of course, at first when you're trying, when you're trying to like correct each other, it. It kind of stings because you're like, I don't really know you like that, but you, but <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. a group, so I'm gonna let you speak into my mm-hmm. life. It's been very tense moments where it's like we're not seeing eye to eye, or I don't see it that way. I don't think this is wrong. You're like, well, I think this is wrong. And there's been moments where like the group was almost done. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like it, it was really like, let's hop on a call. We got to talk about some stuff and get right. So having that accountability, it it does feel like having real brothers because. Me and my older brother, we might not always agree on stuff, but it's it's super pure. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't trade it in for for nothing in the world, and we always got room to grow. I feel like this year, me specifically, like maturing more. Um, it, it's it's always gonna feel weird because I'm always I feel like I'm always the one that's like, hey, maybe we should try this, and I feel like the annoying little brother. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Like Breeze, like the cool older brother. You know what I'm saying? T T Carroll, he just bought business. Yeah. God fearing is like, whatever y'all on, I'm on. And yeah. I'm I'm trying to like think of different stuff. And mm. sometimes I get ahead of myself where it may come off as I don't think this way is good or this way is right. Let's try this. But it's all a part of us growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Man, listen, that. I love I love that. Uh the fact that y'all are even able to correct each other. Yeah. I was always told that if it's not as if it's a of an argument, but um if Y'all get along all the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Somebody lying. It's like some somebody need to open something. Someone up. needs like yeah. you know someone needs to challenge something yeah. in you. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I'm I'm happy that y'all have that. Now when we come back in this next segment, we uh, there are certain things that's happening in CHH that I want to ask you about, For sure. and then we're gonna get more into the ghetto lullabies. Cause really, well, well, I gotta talk <laughs> about these ghetto lullabies. Okay, so we'll be right back here on the 116 Live here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 140. Don't go anywhere. And we're back right here on the 116 Life here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. As y'all know, I got Scooty Wop here with me this week. All right. So um, there are, of course, with you being in CHH, we talked about this last episode on Mm -hmm. 116 Life. And I'm really curious to get your take on it. Everybody saw in the space about the, I think, Noel Miller and Cody Co. talk about, they came across Christian hip hop, gave their opinions. Of course, the majority of it was negative and things like Mm -hmm. that. And everyone has their opinion on it. I'm really curious to what your take on it was when you saw it. Yeah. So it's funny. I seen it because I was on the social media fast. So I wasn't even trying to be on the gram like that, but I had to 
post some stuff for like playlists. Shout out to Fast Break because they were the ones that yes, actually yes, Fast Break, Fast killing Break, it. yes, for killing sure. it. Shout out to Dion. Like if you know, you know. But uh, when I seen it, nothing in me was like, oh, ooh, this is like it's like chew the meat and, and spit out the bones. Um, when they talk about this pick me culture, um, we obviously we all know Christian hip hop. And Christian music is very hot right now mm -hmm. when it comes to content that's being posted. Um, it seems like Instagram is just pushing it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, talking about that. Like yeah. the algorithm is on our side. Yeah. It's on yes. our side for yeah. it. So it's like now that everybody is, is seeing that it's like the way I feel about it is, man, how would I word this? Them saying like, oh, it's corny and stuff like that. That's, that's all opinionated. If you feel like Christian hip hop is corny, that's on you. But we we got substance. We got truth. Um, is there some Christian hip hop that doesn't have substance? And it's more so, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's that, it's that everywhere. Like, I'm not going to lie and say it's not. Like, it's definitely a standard that needs to be elevated. When you, when you hear people like Show Baraka or you hear... KB and, and and you hear like the Derek Miner speak on the 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 space of Christian hip hop and where where it can be and you hear people talk about the golden years mm -hmm. and all, you got cross movement and everything when I go back and listen to that stuff even though it may seem dated now because we're you know that was years ago yeah so we're not gonna go completely back to that um but you hear the lyricism it's it's gospel. Mm -hmm. It's really gospel. It is. So I, I feel like um, that is one area that can be improved. But as far as like content, I do think we can be more creative. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like short form content is what's being consumed a lot right now. Um, you, you look at like a Nick D where it's like he's very, uh, very, it's very natural, very authentic puts his, his phone up and he records and it goes crazy, but people are loving who he is and that it's really him. I feel like when you look at the captions, I will agree that the captions have been recycled. We've been using them a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's the same. It's almost the same one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Christian. And if somebody uses this clip and puts their video after it, it's going <laughs> to prove my case. It'll right, always be exactly. like, it's Christian hip hop evolved. That's right, true. Right. Like, I don't got to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Like, we know. We know what's up. You know, so it's it's like we got to try different things. Like, we know what works, but let's take what works and actually make it personal. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, what did your mind think when you wanted to write this caption? Mm -hmm. The style that you wanted to shoot it in? The angle that you chose to use? Or is it just cut, copy, and paste because it works for them? Like, we we serve a God who wants to create moments with us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, for us to limit the creativity that he has given us by just, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. I'm not going to waste that. Mm -hmm. I can't. So maybe that's been why it's so hard for me to put out a lot of content because on one side, you don't want to be like the mysterious artist and, yeah, I'm Kendrick Lamar right now, so I'm going to post one time and leave. And that's all you're going to get. And then when I drop, I drop. And, when I drop, and everybody going to go crazy. Yeah, Kendrick yeah, yeah. can do that. But yeah, he can. At, at some point, he was... In people's faces. And I like the fact that Christian hip hop is being pushed into people's faces. But let's just get a little more creative with what we're saying. And it's not always going against like the 21 Savage. Like if I was Christian rap, like would I have any fan? Probably not. And then video pops up. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Per just me personally. I feel, I, I feel like. <sighs> oh, my gosh. It, it can just be a lot more creative. Like, I really want to challenge people to be creative, not only in the content, but the music that's being put out. Um, I, with Ghetto Lullabies, I don't want, I'm tired of people saying like, oh yeah, I like Raw Wave, so this can be my replacement mm, for Raw Wave. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to be a replacement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Rod is dope, you know, but. But you want to be you. Yeah, I, I want to be me, for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm, I'm trying to mix it up and switch the beat choice out so that it's not too similar. Um, the the lyrical content, you know what I'm saying? What we're talking about, how deep are we getting into our lives? And is it pointing back 
to the throne at the end of this song. At the end of the day. Now, you yeah. brought something up that I have to talk about. And surprise, this is interrogation. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. So... You dropping these ghetto lullabies. Yeah, you know, these, we ain't getting, I, I know you got them. I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the Star Baby family. Yeah. Okay. So I just want you to know that we ready whenever you ready. Yeah. Okay. But, I'm, but I, I am curious for real about this. So yeah. what inspired the name ghetto, ghetto, lullabies, ghetto lullabies? You know? Um, ghetto. Like, it, you know, I, I don't want to put a actual definition on ghetto. Um, but it's like, I know that this music probably will be mainly played in the ghetto. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? In them places that 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 feel like Sodom and Gomorrah. That mm -hmm. they feel like we're not trying to go in there. We, we Like, we're called to be a light, but let's just hang out in this room with a bunch of other light bulbs. Like, yeah. I don't want this music to be played there. I want it to be played in the true, actual darkness. Mm -hmm. So that you could tell that something's being illuminated, right? Exactly. Yeah, so ghetto and that lullabies is like... I want my kids whenever they get here. Leilani, if you if you see this years down the road, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want her to hear uh this project and it's like it soothes your soul. Mm -hmm. Like if 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 the calamity and everything like that or anxiety is great within you, like one, go to the Bible. Mm -hmm. But two, like you can listen to this project and, and feel heard, you can feel like nurtured, you can feel cared for. Um so ghetto lullabies, that's, that's just what it is. It's also like a, like a, not a death to the, uh, the old, to the old scooty. Because I'm not going to lie, yeah. I was going to ask you that next. Now, this yeah. is a genuine, I mean, of course, all the questions I've asked have been genuine. But yeah, because of, you, sco you have no idea how much I played super duper crunk tape. Yeah. I'm not lying <laughs> to you. So I knew that you were in this in this new season yeah. and I love everything you've been putting out and yeah. everything you've been teasing. I was like, man, like, are we not going to get any more of that? Like, are we, is it just going to be get all of us? We'll never get anything like a super duper crunk mm. tape but we not get a fresh sheet anymore. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Can you speak to that a little bit? I ain't about to limit God. I, I, I'm, I'll i definitely pop back out to like another crunk tape. Like I got some beats for super duper crunk tape too. <gasps> it's just like, I, I haven't gotten to record on them. Like, I may, I've made them. They're on a computer, but I haven't recorded on them. Wow. Yeah, right now it's just, yeah. I'm, in that, I'm in, that, in that mode where I want to talk for real to somebody. Yeah. Like, the beats ain't going to be super crunk. You're going to have to listen. Yeah. It might just be a piano, and I'm just rapping. Mm. So, oh, that would be so fire, yeah, though. Yeah, the, the intro is just the piano. So it's like, you have to listen to every word that's being yeah. said. Um, but, nah, I, Crunk Scooty not not done. Okay. Uh, the Rage Scooty hasn't even popped mm -hmm. out yet, but like for real, yeah, that's gonna be crazy. Yeah, Star Baby Worldwide is really like. Yeah. Okay, so I, I want to talk about that too because mm -hmm. I feel like you you created this. I don't even want to say fandom, but just yeah. like this this community yeah. of people. So let's talk about even just what Star Baby Family is. Yeah, so so Star Baby Family, uh, it's it's based off the scripture Psalms one forty seven four. Um, where it says he who counts the stars and he calls them each by name. And it basically expounding upon that. Um, it's talking about like the uniqueness in, in, in how you are made and not seeing yourself as another star just in the sky somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but like us coming together, really forming these constellations and, and seeing beautiful things, um, not feeling overlooked and underbooked, but, truly value who you are like God valued just as much as he valued Jesus and he sent his son to die on the cross for you so that you can live you know eternally like our value is the same as Jesus that's crazy that's crazy so so for anybody that's looking at themselves like uh whatever I do doesn't matter it's gonna go under the radar like no you were on that same level as Jesus and God sent his son to die for you. You know what I'm saying? So that that's like the the overall prowess. As far as like the design work, I want it to be simple. Um, that's the baby part where it's like a kid would see this. That's like, it. oh, look at like yeah. yeah so yeah. just being integrated with, with both the old and the young and the people who felt like outcasts and the people who felt like they weren't or they weren't heard and the people who are very vocal, like let's just all come together mm -hmm. and do something great. So that's that's the Star Baby Worldwide essence. It branches off. Like we'll do artist development. You know what I'm saying? Like A and R work. We'll do 
We got uh, fashion and streetwear. Yeah, I was going to I was going to talk to you about that because yeah. like when it comes to the apparel, mm-hmm. you also have SBF Radio, which I think is so fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. what made you want to start with those two? With first with uh, the the music hub, and then also with fashion. Um, fashion, I felt like, and this is this is no diss to like any uh, Christian apparel brands. You know what I'm saying? But when I talked to my boy Elias Vargas, um, he's his mind. It's great. It's amazing. He mm-hmm. studies stuff and really understands like fashion, but also like the ethos, the original stuff. You know what I'm saying? What is your ethos? So what I saw a lot in, in the Christian side was scripture, block font. Bro, talk about it. Cross. And it's going to sell. It is. It's going to sell. It like So at, at one point, I'm like, man, I might as well just sell this because yeah. everybody's going to eat this up. Mm-hmm. Jesus loves me. Shout out to Jesus Loves You, though, by yeah, the way. Like, I, I rock yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's like uh, I, I didn't want to be uh, like put myself in a box. Mm-hmm. So I made something that was strictly streetwear based off of uh, skater fashion. Oversized, mm-hmm. grungy, bright. Like you'll see it from a mile away. Um, so that was like why I wanted to go that route. My wife is helping me because now I got like the canvas bags that are coming out, the the plushies. Sheesh. Yeah, like the 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 yeah, it'll be a star plushie. That's oh, shut up. On the way, yeah, we got stickers, all that good stuff, the packaging. Um, I just wanted to take a chance. Like yeah. I really put it on my heart. And then SBF Radio, I felt like I wasn't showing enough love to other artists that weren't like my peers are on the same level in a sense. Um, but it's like. My way of saying, I see you. Like, you can submit your stuff through a Google form, and I will, yeah. I gotta check it today, matter of fact. Yeah. But um, I hear your music, and you don't have to pay a dollar. You we gotta need pay more of that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanna be able to put together music. Of course, it's my taste, mm-hmm. but like, it's a lot of new people on there, you know? So I just wanted to give that platform to, to other artists that are coming up. Um, rather than folks that see me at a show, and I'm like, oh yeah, check out my music. Set the third. We gotta work. I'm like, how about you just send me your music and I could put it on a platform yeah. that I'm pushing, you know? Uh, so that's that's the whole thing by behind SBF Radio. If we can get on actual radio one day, insane. I, I'm I'm seeing it. I believe it. What else do you What else do you have planned for um, Star Baby Family? Like I know you said A and R. You said mm-hmm. artist development. What other things do you want to do? Uh, so A and R artist development. Um, the fashion apparel is a huge thing. I want to do not concerts, but like kickbacks. Kickbacks. So like that, folks pull up, you know, it's good food. Um, you know, people can share their music around. It's literally just them showing up. We'll have the apparel and stuff there. Pieces that haven't been dropped yet. Mm-hmm. All right, just come here, get some contact information and just chill. You know, we can have conversations and do like podcasts. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like the SBF podcast with... With like an artist, a producer, a graphic designer, a clothing designer, somebody that yeah, I just know off the right, street, you yeah. know, just like getting big perspectives. Like I, I don't see the limit on where it can go, mm-hmm. which is crazy because before I'm like I don't want to put together like my own community. Like it feels I felt like it was super hard. Mm. Like mm, like you got the like you got HGA that's huge, you, yeah, and it's a comparison thing. Like if you're gonna look at everybody else's, you look at the Glow Nation and and all those things, of course, you're going to get discouraged, but they've been putting in that work yeah. and the time. So it's like, oh, I should do this. Yeah. Is, is it as hard as you thought it was going to be? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I was like, man. That's it was mental. Yeah, you know it's just mental. Yeah. Like, the, the hardest thing to do is to start. So once you do that, like once you start, you're good. It's up from there. Yeah, just take time to like read books and watch YouTube videos mm-hmm. and all of that good stuff. Like it's not as hard as what we think it is. I'm I'm so happy that not even just seeing in a music sense, but you're in you're is you're in such a I feel like a soaking like you're like just like yeah. soaking everything up you know and it, it's like in everything you're doing the conversation we just had things like that it's just coming out of mm-hmm. everything you're doing and um you talked about uh, SBF radio and then of course like you know the apparel and just all the future things you have planned you it's. It's evident that it's music, but that's also so much more. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious if you ever thought about like what your what you want your legacy to be. Okay, legacy. I, I guess we will go with like the mission statement. Um, 
my mission statement was always to be the people's champ where you look at wrestling. I don't know if you've watched like WWE wrestling, mm -hmm. but for all my WWE heads, the people's champ was Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. So everybody knows The Rock. Yeah. Um, but it was like when he won, it felt like everybody won. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He kept everybody included. And that's what I want the legacy to be is that I was inclusive. I, I never looked at your status to see if you were worthy to do anything. I wanted to pour in more than I got, you know what I'm saying, from others. Uh, and it's like a pay it forward. It's a movie called Pay It Forward. Where it was this kid that did like a good deed and he died in the movie. Um, but what he did was remembered forever. And people just kept giving and giving and giving, you know, beyond ourselves. So I just want to be somebody that that gives like my time and people remember me as somebody that like he took the time to just hear me out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he gave what he had. May not have been all that I needed, but you know, what knowledge he had he would give to me. Or the clothes off my back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Anything like that. So I feel like I want that to be the legacy. Um I feel like it's gonna mature a little bit more. Because uh, I just turned, well, I turned 25, so my prefrontal cortex is, like, finally complete. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like I got a little more time, you know, 27, 28, mm -hmm. for it to really click. Yeah. But, yeah, for right now, we'll, we'll see in a couple of years when we play this back. Listen, know, when we play this back, it's going to be <laughs> it's gonna be a legendary thing, yeah. man. Thank you for being on the show. Give everyone sure. your social media for those who don't know how they can follow you, keep up with you. Um, You can follow me on Instagram at ScootyWop, S-C-O-O-T-I-E. W O P, um, Facebook, same thing, Scooty Wop, uh, YouTube, Scooty Wop. What else? Twitch soon, uh, SBF. Uh, I, I gotta set that up, but that that won't be here yet. Um, what else? You can starbabyworldwide.com. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can go there. You know we got your your emails and everything like that. Um, or you might just see me on your local street serving. Real. Listen, man, I'm I'm so happy that y'all were able to be tuned in and introduced or even learn more about the the legend in the mech and that is Scooty Wop. And I'm so happy you were here with us, bro. Listen, shout out to everyone that was tuned in. Thank y'all for tuning in once again to another episode of the 116 Life here on Holy Culture Radio Series XM Channel 140. We'll see you guys next week. Next week.